everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I'm back with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. But that's not all I'm back with. This is a special video. I have hit 50 subscribers, and that's fantastic. I've only been doing this for a few months. I'm still a newcomer, and I've already hit 50 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who subscribed. I'm very grateful. I really appreciate it. In this video, we are going to be reviewing the G.I. Joe Ram motorcycle, but I've got a special announcement after the review, so make sure you stick around for that. This is the 1982 G.I. Joe Ram Motorcycle. Ram, R-A-M, is an acronym that stands for Rapid Fire Motorcycle, which doesn't actually spell out Ram, it spells out Erfum. The Ram Motorcycle was first released in 1982 in the first line of vehicles when G.I. Joe was rebooted in 1982. It was also sold in 1983, it was discontinued in 1984, and it was not replaced with any other motorcycle in 1984. But there was a replacement for the Ram Motorcycle in 1985, the Silver Mirage Motorcycle. The Ram was worth two flag points and it did not come with an action figure. Let's look at the parts and the features of the Ram Motorcycle, starting of course with this very large prominent gun that attaches to the side. The blueprints call this a 20 millimeter electric Gatling gun and it really does look very impressive. Lots of nice detail on here. It has a wheel on here at the bottom so it can roll along when it's attached to the motorcycle. The gun has these two pegs here. One of them is round and another one is rectangular and they fit into the corresponding holes on the side of the motorcycle. They fit right in there, and they don't snap in, they just friction in. Uh, it doesn't always stay in very well, so sometimes I use a little bit of sticky tack just to hold it in a little bit better. On either side, we have these saddle packs. There are two of them, and they fit into these holes, uh, these rectangular slots here in the back. And these are frequently lost items, so you will often see Ram motorcycles missing one or both of these saddle packs. And as you can see, uh, they're not the same. Uh, although they are the same mold, they have different stickers. There's saddle pack one and saddle pack two. So if you're wanting a complete Ram, you need to check and check the stickers and make sure that you're getting the right ones. You need both of them in order to have a complete motorcycle. The front wheel turns a little bit uh, and not too much, and that's a nice feature. I'm actually glad that it doesn't turn too much, otherwise uh, it might not roll straight when you roll it along the ground. So just a little bit of turn in the front wheel is okay. One thing I like about the tires is that uh, on the side it doesn't say Goodyear or anything like that. That it has Hasbro's copyright information. This kind of hood looking thing up at the front here, the blueprints call aerodynamic fairing. And this may be taken from a real world vehicle, the Honda CB900F2, which has a similar sort of housing on the front end here. On the other side, we have a sticker control panel. That's a nice detail. Uh, and it's just hollow inside. There are no handlebars. But this was designed for the straight arm action figures like Breaker here. Uh, the straight arm, straight arm action figures could not bend their uh, arms at the bicep to hold on to uh, handlebars. So uh, just having them stick their hands inside there was just much more practical. It worked better with these 1982 figures with the less articulation. All the way around the motorcycle, there is a lot of really impressive detail. Uh, this is a nicely detailed uh, motorcycle, a very nicely detailed vehicle, uh, especially considering this was the first line of vehicles, and sometimes those early G.I. Joe vehicles uh, were a little bit lacking in detail compared to later vehicles. But this this looks really nice. This engine, the blueprints call a 1000cc twin cam engine, fuel injected and turbocharged. At the bottom, there is a kickstand that uh, will go up and down. And this is another frequently missing item. So if you uh, are getting a Ram motorcycle, uh, just make sure that it still has the, the kickstand that is often missing. On both sides, we have some posts here, uh, two on this side and two on that side, and those are for holding the action figure on the motorcycle. I'll show you how that works. Um, the action figure's legs kind of go between those posts. On this side, uh, the, the top of the foot goes under this post, and the, this post goes on the back of his ankle. On the other side, 
uh, we have one post for uh, the back of his leg and another lower post for the top of his foot and uh, that kind of holds him on there uh, with his hands inside the, uh, the hood. And I, th I find it easier to put the action figure on before putting the gun on. Uh, if the gun is on, uh, sometimes it obstructs the uh, uh, action figure's foot. So uh, once you have the figure in, like Breaker here, uh, there you go, and you have uh, Breaker ready to ride into battle on the Ram motorcycle. He looks like he's ready to do some business. There is a minor controversy about who should ride the Ram motorcycle. In the comic book, uh, it always showed Rock and Roll as the uh, driver of the Ram. Always paired Rock and Roll with it. Uh, and uh, I don't know, he looks pretty good. Rock and Roll was the machine gunner of that first G.I. Joe group. Uh, and so I guess they kind of figured that machine gunner, big machine gun, those should go together. However, the box art did not show rock and roll on the RAM. It had Breaker. And Breaker was featured in the first TV commercial uh, of, uh, that included the RAM motorcycle. Uh, and I have always been partial to Breaker on the RAM. I always preferred Breaker to rock and roll on the RAM motorcycle uh, for a couple reasons. First of all, Breaker. Uh, doesn't have any weapons. He didn't come with any firearms. He only came with his communication uh, equipment and his helmet. And so he doesn't have any guns to fire. So if you pair him with the Ram, he can still have all of his accessories on. And he has this really badass gun on his motorcycle so he can ride into battle and uh, actually fight Cobra. Whereas Rock and Roll, he already had a really big gun. And it wasn't really very easy for him to carry his big gun when he was riding on the motorcycle. So I think that Rock and Roll is pretty well equipped, but... Uh, Breaker really, I think, fits the Ram motorcycle better. I, I even like the combination of the lighter green on the motorcycle and the darker or medium green on Breaker's uniform. I just think that looks really good. So I put the question to you. Do you prefer Rock and Roll on the Ram or Breaker or one of the other action figures? Uh, what's your preference? That's my review of the Ram motorcycle. It is a pretty simple toy and so there's not a lot to go over here, but it's still a really cool toy. I loved this when I was a kid. I think that it's, it's just a really awesome vehicle. Uh, it it's, looks great with the action figures. It looks really menacing with that huge gun on the side. Uh, it looks fast, so it really looks like something that uh, the Joe team would really want to have and that they would like to take into battle. This this is like a fast attack vehicle with some great armament. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up on YouTube and make sure you subscribe. I've got a lot of great new G.I. Joe toy reviews coming up. You do not want to miss them. And make sure you like the Hooded Cobra Commander 788 Facebook page. There are a lot of updates on that page that you don't get anywhere else. Else. But this is not the end of the video. I've got a special announcement coming up right now. I hope you enjoyed the review. Now it's time for a special announcement. I'm going to be giving away a vintage G.I. Joe toy to one of my viewers. I decided when I started that when I hit 100 subscribers, I was going to give away one of my vintage G.I. Joe toys. So now that we're at the halfway point, I'm letting you know that when I hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to give away a toy, and specifically, I'm going to give away the Ram Motorcycle, the very one that I reviewed in this video. This is from my personal collection, and this could be yours. I'll tell you how it's going to work. First, I've got to hit 100 subscribers. When I hit 100 subscribers, watch for the 100 subscriber announcement video. And then you will put a comment on that video to let me know that you would like to be in the running for the vintage G.I. Joe toy. Then I will select one of the commenters at random, and it will be yours. You won't even have to pay for shipping. Now you might be thinking, this is kind of a small toy, and it's a fairly common item. That's not much of a prize. But hey, this is just for my first 100 subscribers. 
as I hit more subscriber milestones, I'll be giving away bigger and better G.I. Joe toys. I want to share some of the vintage G.I. Joe love with you, the viewer. So stick with me. There are a lot of great G.I. Joe toys yet to review, and it's going to be a great time as we climb up toward 100 subscribers. And then when we get there, one of you is going to get this little guy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe!